Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew and today I want to talk about Xbox and what's going on. Uh, <laughs> we've been getting some crazy, crazy stuff coming out of just everywhere. Um, now, the, the newest rumor is that Xbox is or Microsoft is mad at Xbox and all of that nonsense. If you're an Xbox fan, right now you need to brace yourself. Over the next coming or over, over the next few months, over the coming months, you are going to see a major uptick of negative pushback towards Xbox. Like you, you're you're going to. Um, as soon as that Activision deal goes through, the 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 floodgates are gonna open up. It's gonna be PlayStation's out selling the Xbox four to one. It's gonna be all of this good stuff about PlayStation, Xbox is going to be consistently failing. Um, <laughs> it, it It's going to get messy. It's going to get mad. And that is, that's normal. That's normal when the paradigm of, of, of like, like the power is going to shift. Like it's, it, you're going to see a massive, not like a massive transfer of like, everybody's just going to drop PlayStation and run to Xbox or anything like that. But you're, is what you're going to see is you're going to see the future of gaming, which is, which is Microsoft, Amazon, you know, Facebook, all of this stuff. You're going to see the future of gaming evolve right between right, right before your very eyes. Like you're going to see this. And this is this is going to be a significant enough change in the way the gaming landscape is laid out to where to where, to where you're going to notice it. it it's almost going to be as big as when nintendo just completely dropped the high-end console market and just started going for carving out their own little niche it, it's going to be it's going to be big like that uh, a lot of people don't see it coming you got all these PlayStation fanboys out there parading, you know, like, yeah, look how many PlayStations the PlayStation has sold. Well, <clears throat> here's the thing about that, okay? Here's the thing about that. Right now, PlayStation is, in my opinion, suffering a identity crisis. PlayStation is suffering an identity crisis. They don't know what they want to do. They don't know what they want to do there. Everything is just so far up in the air. There's a lot riding on Call of Duty and the and the, the financial support that Call of Duty brings to the PlayStation platform. Uh, why do you think there's such a big push for PlayStation to get into the games as service market and really find something? <clears throat> so you've got all their first party games that are pretty much just throwing every, everything up in the wind and and i mean if if you're a playstation fan you 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 can feel this coming if you're a playstation fan like you you know we just got done we just got the burning shores um it's it's got you know aloy being able to decide to be you know gay if she wants to whatever i mean that's cool but you've also had a whole lot of this stuff in everything recent everything that's come out since playstation 5 it's 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 just been like one after another of these games that are, um, I'm going to, I'm going to say virtue signaling just because of the fact that like they're, they're, they're trying to make it feel all super inclusive and all of that stuff. And they're, and, and it doesn't even feel like these games are good stories anymore. It just feels like they're, they're put together to feature all of this different stuff, which I mean, like, Overall, I mean, it works. It's okay, whatever. You know, the graphics get the game by, or, or some standout part in a story might 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 be just enough to push it over the top. But you notice, uh, like the score, the score of these, the overall Metacritic scores of these games just kind of, just kind of fluctuate and pretty, pretty, uh, <laughs> pretty much to the point where it's like, oh wow, you know, like th they're not scoring as high as they used to. And most of them are forgettable. I mean, like God of War Ragnarok, forgettable story. Horizon Forbidden West, I mean, it was okay, but it wasn't like earth shattering or anything like the first game. Uh, <clears throat> you, you've had, you know, Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart. I mean, that one, that one was pretty decent. That was a pretty good game. I, I'm not going to say nothing negative about that. I liked, you know, them bringing Rivet to the, to the forefront and stuff, but... 
<laughs> I mean, they, they, they've kind of sidelined Ratchet for Ribbit. You know, you can't tell me that Rivet wasn't the star of that game. They pretty much sidelined Ratchet. You know, God of War Ragnarok, they pretty much sidelined Kratos. They, they, they made him, you know... Um, they, 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 they significantly weakened Kratos's character from what, like, if you grew up in, from my, from, from the beginning of the God of War series, you know what I'm talking about. Like, you know what I'm talking about. Like Kratos is a shell of his former self. Uh, they pretty much got rid of Nathan Drake. You know, they brought in, you know, I mean, they, they've gotten rid of Nathan Drake. They got rid of freaking, uh, Joel, it it's just this whole thing that like the PlayStation Studios have like went on and and they've 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 gotten rid of what made PlayStation games great and filled it with just I mean it's it's not not like what they're doing's not bad by any means like it's not terrible but it's not like it 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 doesn't feel it doesn't feel as genuine as say like The Last of Us 1 you know what I mean? Like, it just doesn't feel genuine like Uncharted 4. It doesn't feel genuine like some of these bangers that came out on the PlayStation 4 and, and before that. It's it's starting to feel like they're they're really they're really trying to figure out that they're they're having an identity identity crisis right now in real time, and it's and it's just falling down around them. The cells of these games are starting to lack. When people finally play through some of these games, they're like, "Wow, man, that just wasn't the banger I thought it was gonna be." And and you can you can you can do whatever you want with your little console war. You can say whatever you want, but you know what I'm saying is true. You know what I'm saying is true. And the reason why it makes you mad is because it does. It hurts deep. Like I'm a PlayStation fan. I know how you feel, man, because I feel that way. But I'm not confined to some stupid plastic box that I can't talk about it. Um, and then, and then to top it off, then you have PSVR two. I love my PSVR two. Like I love the thing. I think it's great, but we all know that it is suffering in cells right now. Like it's not, it's not moving as fast as it is, as it, as it potentially should. And, and that's that, that mainly is due to the, to the, to the amount, you know, to, to the high cost of it. And then, you know, just the lack of software at launch. I do believe the PlayStation 2 VR, VR 2 is going to take off and, and get a little bit better. <clears throat> but then you've got PlayStation buying studios that, you know, that, that are, that are building out like games as service games. Like you don't see it coming right now because you've had the first couple of years of the PlayStation 5 having your traditional PlayStation games just a little bit watered down. No, not necessarily watered down, but but not as good as they could have been if they would have just stuck with a solid story and moved forward with some good character development instead of all this like this um this virtue signaling that they're that they're that they're trying to do. Like I get it, man. Like during the production of all those games, Donald Trump was running for president. He won. He beat Hillary Clinton. He freaking like it seriously. It seriously like did something to game developers when that happened. Like I don't know. I mean, like Ubisoft started doing all the stuff. You had you had pretty much you had like Take Two Interactive, the creators of freaking <laughs> of, of of Grand Tr Grand Theft Auto, out there doing like a virtue signal thing, like during E3, man. Like you seriously had nonsense like that going on that's just how screwed up in the head like everybody was like they 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 worry so much about politics that they can't even get their work done and then they're like oh yeah we're gonna show you and then every and then and then society just went mad and now we're just getting the uh and now we're getting the product of all of that and hopefully hopefully that works itself out but at at the point right now that it's at like i don't know man like if 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 PlayStation didn't have Call of Duty money, could they really afford to build the games that they're building right now? I don't think so. I I think that if PlayStation didn't wasn't so dependent on Call of Duty, and they had to depend on their own first party platform games to like make money, you wouldn't be seeing none of this stuff, guys. Like you wouldn't. And and that's and that's one hundred percent honest. You you wouldn't because the market is not one hundred percent there yet. They, they still need they still need like regular people's money you know they they still need like regular freaking you know people that play video games and they want that 
that hardcore story and that, you know, that they, they want that. They want that toxic masculinity in their video game still. Like you still have a significant portion of people that want that type of experience that don't really care for all the stuff that they're putting out right now. I mean, most of these people defending all of this stuff and I'm like, yeah, I mean, this stuff's great. They probably haven't even, I mean, dude, <laughs> I, I get the whole, you got to defend your plastic box thing. Like I get it. I get it. 100%. I get it. Hopefully moving forward, things are changing. You know, things are, I, hopefully they're getting the point. They're like, oh man, we need to stop doing this stuff. But, but I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> I could be completely wrong on that. Maybe they've done some market research and this is exactly what the market research is telling them that they, that they need to create. And people like me are just a, like a, a thought of the past and they're willing to lose that money for, for like the new, for the new crowd that's fine with me. They, they see that games like Fortnite and other live service games are making money hand over fist and they want a piece of that. So now they're throwing as much as they can at that <clears throat> only needing one, only needing one game to perform like Fortnite. So they've got like 10 of them in the works. Um, a few of them have already flopped and, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's, it's, it's getting interesting, but Back to the point at hand, like I said, you're going to see so much negativity going after Xbox due to that. Like you, like you, you're going to see so much negativity from, from everybody that loves PlayStation that are just going to be in such denial of what's going on to the fact that like, it, they're not even going to know what hit them. They're not even going to know what hit them. Xbox right now, they're, they're, they're just, they're just sitting back. They're just putting their, they're just putting their pieces together. They're, they're moving pieces on the, on the chessboard, whatever they're, they're positioning themselves for the future of gaming. Why PlayStation is chasing all kinds of different rabbit holes that, I mean, I, I don't know, man. I don't know if that's going to work out for them, but then you hear all these people talking about how Xbox is down and Xbox is done for, and Xbox is going to become third party. Um, no guys. Xbox is going to have some games that are third party. They're going to have Call of Duty that's third party because people want to buy that and they they want to sell it to anybody who wants to buy it. They're going to have Diablo. People are going to want to buy that. They're going to sell it to anybody that wants to buy that. Bethesda, on the other hand, I know as an Xbox fan and you as an Xbox fan, Xbox fan, a lot of us have been putting a lot of pressure on Bethesda to perform for Xbox. Bethesda is still 100% in charge of what they do, how they market their games, how they build their games, when they build their games. The only thing that they're pretty much not in charge of is if they're going to make their games exclusive or not. Xbox has already said this, so I don't understand why there's so much pressure. And, and the only reason I bring this up is because I've seen a lot of people on Twitter, you know, freaking out on Aaron Greenberg, telling them, yeah, man, this can't be happening and stuff. And it's like, dude, man, Xbox is staying hands off with certain developers and you know, like Bethesda. They're like, Hey man, you, we want you guys to continue to do what Bethesda does. We're not going to come in here and shake up your ethos. We're not going to come in here and shake up your, we're, we're not trying to exert any outward pressure on Bethesda because we don't want to ruin the camaraderie camaraderie that you guys already have. They don't want to ruin the Bethesda like mindset, like their, their, their morale for, for Bethesda, you know, they, it, it's, it's an hands-off approach, you know, so that Bethesda can still basically operate the way that Bethesda already operated just, just with different owners. Bethesda is still doing what Bethesda does. And for us to, to, to demand like, oh yeah, well now you're an Xbox first party team. So you have to perform to this. I, I think that's just a little bit unrealistic on our parts, just because of the fact that like, look at Bethesda's track record. They make great games that people love, but I mean, they make mistakes. They're not exactly perfect. You know, the infusion of money from Microsoft, you know, should, should help them with that, but they're still Bethesda at its core. They're still the same developers that are at Bethesda. They haven't just like all of a sudden like gained these new, <clears throat> these new powers. And now they can just make make certain games so you gotta understand like when it comes from bethesda you gotta expect bethesda what you know and what you love about bethesda 
and and move with it, man. Grow with that company. If the, if, if Bethesda makes games that you like, support them. If they if they uh, if they uh, like support them like you always have. I I haven't seen Xbox hi- or uh, Bethesda hire like like a bunch of influx of new people to to make their studios any different than what they already are. They're still working with the same tools. The same stuff. They're learning their new creation engine. They're learning their new tools. They're putting together their new, their their new uh, game engines for their for their future projects and stuff. And they're still just being Bethesda. And and like I do, I really do feel bad for Bethesda, for Bethesda leadership, for Todd Howard and all of them guys, because man, it's true. They they had you know Bethesda man. They were proud of that. And then and then they sold you know. And then the uh, the old CEO passed away and everything and. Like, they're already under enough pressure, man. They don't need a whole bunch of Xbox fans that are like, yeah, you guys promised this and blah, blah, blah. Like, I get it, man. Like, I get it. Yes, Bethesda one day is going to be in a position to totally, totally support and hold up, you know, Xbox and create amazing first-party games for the Xbox platform. Right now, man, now's not that time that, that, like, they're just going to all of a sudden overnight change and become like these these top of the line developers, you know, like Bethesda's good. What they make sells. A lot of people buy it. So come on, man. I, I personally am not going to put any more pressure on Bethesda from from this channel standpoint. I like what they do. I'll play Redfall. I'll probably play it on the PC at 60 frames or, or higher or whatever. Um, I, I will, you know, do a couple videos for Series S and Series X and stuff like that and, and, and look at it. But I'm going to play the game and I'm going to give you my honest opinion on it. If it's a good game, cool. If it's not, whatever. We'll move on and we'll wait for Starfield. But <laughs> when it comes to the future of gaming, Xbox is positioning them, themselves for the long haul. PlayStation is PlayStation right now to me just feels like, oh, get that money, get that money, get that money. And... And I mean, that's fine. That's the way they've always done it. But I think that that way of thinking and I think that that business model, it's not like it's on its way out, but it is going to be less appealing once Xbox really does start putting out some pretty decent quality games on Game Pass that are good enough to be like, wow, dude, is buying these games with all these rainbows and all this other stuff really better than playing like that vampire game? Like it's going to get to a point where you're seriously going to be asking yourself those types of questions. It, are, are those graphics really so good that I have to pay 70 bucks for that? Or I could play this one with a little bit less graphics with, you, you know, and, and be able to, to play that on subscription. Eventually Xbox will be to a point where they can, where they can put out enough content to where it will keep everybody busy. Now, everybody says, that people with Game Pass don't buy games. That's kind of true. That is kind of true. Like you are, if you have a Game Pass subscription, you're getting a good, you're getting a good value. You are. If you, if you sign up for PlayStation Plus Premium or, or Extra, you're getting a good value. There's no reason to buy games if you have a plethora of games that you can download and play off of one of those subscription services. There's no reason to pay $70 for a game when you can just pay $15 a month to play whatever you want to play. Now, yeah, there's there, there are going to be those games out there, but I'm telling you, man, this generation, I have seen it firsthand. $70 AAA bangers underperforming games that come out on Game Pass, man. You get, you get the game on Game Pass, 28 million people playing like Forza or whatever. You got like two, three, five million people buying a Sony first party game. That's, that's significant, man. That's significant. 25 million people downloading a game versus 5 million people buying the game. That's literally the same income. And that game selling 5 million isn't going to sell 5 million every month, but game pass is going to make $380 million every freaking month selling that service. You are going to see a paradigm shift. I've said this before. People laugh at me or or laugh and they don't think it's going to happen because PlayStation's out there right now selling out selling Xboxes 4 to 1. <laughs> you don't need an Xbox to play Game Pass games. 
you can play on a on a on an Xbox One. You can play next gen Xbox first party games on an Xbox One S through xCloud. I streamed it the other night. You don't understand. Like right now, people don't need to run out and buy an Xbox. They can literally sit there online and play the same game that I'm playing natively on my Xbox Series X. They can play it at 1080p at 60 frames a second, and it feels better than what they would be playing on their Xbox One S. It does. Even with a little bit more latency and everything, it still feels better than playing at 30 frames per second. And that's what people don't understand. You do not need an Xbox Series X or an Xbox Series S to enjoy Microsoft first party games or anything that's on Game Pass. Really, anything that's on Game Pass, you can still play on your Xbox One with 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 XCloud. So when people are sitting out here saying that like PlayStation's outselling Xbox two to one, no, dude, you got to look at the other numbers, the the amount of monthly active users that are spending time in the Xbox ecosystem that are still being able to utilize their old technology to play new games. They're still being able to do that. There are more monthly active monthly users on Xbox right now. And that number continues to grow while PlayStation keeps selling consoles and one to two games and people finish those games. And then they got to wait till they can buy another game. Their, their user base is generally not doing as well as what Xbox gamers are doing. Most Xbox gamers are on their Xbox fairly regularly playing something new from their game pass subscription. So I don't know, man, I get it. I hear all you guys out there talking, talking negatively about Xbox, but I think you're just, I think you've completely missed the mark. Yes. PlayStation's out there selling a lot of consoles. They're doing a good job. They are. And we want that. We want them to do good. Like we do. We want them to do good because if they don't, man, <laughs> like then the competition's over. Then, then like, what do we do from there? Like, no, PlayStation needs to do good. So when you're trying to throw that in Xbox guys' faces that PlayStation's better, like, okay, they're selling a lot more consoles. That is their one and only business model. They have to sell you a PlayStation 5 so they can sell you content. Xbox doesn't need to sell you an Xbox. You, you need to get that point in your head. You do not have to buy an Xbox to play Xbox games. You don't have to. You have to buy a PlayStation 5 to play PlayStation games. Or you got to buy a PC and wait years for them to put them out because they, I, I don't know. It's going to happen. PlayStation games are going to come to PC eventually, day and date. And therefore, it is going to significantly reduce the PlayStation console user base. It will. It will have the same effect it had on Xbox. But if you've got a PC, you get to play Xbox games. You see, you see what I mean? There's there's so many more PCs out there in the wild than there are these little plastic boxes. Let that sink in. If you can already get Xbox games on your PC, like you, like you, like the like the ponies always say, you don't need an Xbox. All you need is a PlayStation 5 and a PC. <clears throat> <laughs> you're right dude they they've already got a pc they probably upgraded last generation when they found out their favorite games were going to be coming straight to pc and they would get two copies <laughs> you know what i mean like you guys keep talking about these stupid talking points that really don't matter and then you guys want to talk about the console sales and you know how how a game like hi-fi rush does who cares man hi-fi rush what it took to develop that game to put it in Game Pass, probably significantly less money than what they make a month in Game Pass. So you really think that Microsoft is mad about losing money on a game that probably took them like one, maybe two years to make? If that, if that, you got to understand that that probably didn't cost Microsoft or Bethesda a ton of money to make Hi-Fi Rush, but they probably still easily made their money back on that. And if not, dude, Game Pass got a major boost having that game in there because it was a good one. It was a good one. P 
People liked it. People genuinely liked it, that game. Wow, you guys are crazy, man. Like the whole console war stuff is, has got to end. Microsoft is really not trying to compete with Sony. They're, they're not. They're, they, they're not even out there really trying to market Xbox anymore. They're, they're, they're not trying to market it to the point where they're like spending millions of dollars like PlayStation does to market these games that that really are just that they're 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 average at best some of them and and it's like oh dude man playstation used to make good great story games that they had some compelling you know compelling reason to buy them now it's like oh boy i don't know man do i really need that game uh, i buy them you know out of habit man i've been buying playstation first party games day and date for a very long time man and I don't think that's going to stop anytime soon, but my gosh, man, like they need to get their head back in the game because you know, people are seeing this stuff coming out. And I get a lot of people in the comment section over on Twitter, everywhere. They're just like, wow, dude, what is PlayStation first party doing to their game? They're, they're, they're getting rid of all their freaking cool icons like Kratos and Nathan Drake and everybody else. And they're replacing them with, with, with what, what are they replacing them with, man? Like, come on, come on, man. Like, get it together playstation or you're gonna have issues man like you're you're seriously giving gamers trust issues at the same time so yeah but that's my feelings on it man that's my feelings on it if you like this content don't forget to like and subscribe and uh we'll see xbox in the future see you guys later have a good night